Up next, left foot braking in a modern car, and of course, how not to do it. And what you should do when it all goes totally Skynet. Down there! I do hate it when it does that. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. You can inquire at the website about that. Here's a question from you if you are a man in a van, a left foot breaking man in a van, but not a serial killer, of course. I vet all these questions very carefully indeed, even though... Serial killers, you know, they get such a bad rap. I blame law enforcement and, of course, the court system for discriminating against these people and ruining their reputations. I would love to work on that advertising campaign, of course, just saying to restore inclusivity to serial killers everywhere. <laughs> yes. Where were we? I'm currently driving an Hyundai IMAX diesel. If you drive with two feet in slow traffic, i.e. left foot resting on the brake and right foot on the accelerator, the car begins to accelerate and then it is as if the ignition switch is turned off. I found that if the left foot has released the brakes but is still on the pedal, it causes a confused message to be sent to the he see you. Hyundai says this problem does not exist, but I believe that both Kia and Hyundai diesels have this problem. Obviously, leaving the left foot off the brake pedal is the answer, but this vehicle is a community vehicle and at least six drivers in excess of 70 years of age drive it. Maybe you or some of your contacts in the Hyundai service department have experienced this Problem. That question does force me to wonder, would I rather be run over by six drivers aged 75 or one driver aged 450 or one duck-sized horse? I find it difficult to make a call here, but I suppose the duck-sized horse is looking rather good if I want to get on the news worldwide, because I suspect that would be a first. On non-serial killer Paul's question here, though, we're going to have a respectful disagreement, I suspect. Because this is not, in fact, a problem. It is an intentionally designed-in safety feature, and most modern cars have it. I haven't counted them all up, of course, but a lot of manufacturers are doing this these days. It is a piece of software in the fundamental ECU code that says... If the throttle and the brake are both operated together, brakes are going to win. We are going to shut down the throttle and prioritise braking. In fact, it is very good to have this feature in your car. Imagine this, OK? You are driving along and, I don't know, five years down the track or something, a dodgy floor mat shifts forward underfoot unexpectedly and it wedges itself against the accelerator which is flat down on the floor and irretrievable or hypothetically you might have complete brain fade during some critical driving incident and you jam both pedals flat to the floor instead of just hitting the brake because high level cognitive abilities are extremely degraded in a crisis which of course is why you need fight training, for example, if you want to survive getting mugged in the street, and the same reason why you need advanced driver training if you want to swerve, avoid, and importantly, recover control in a crisis. Getting around a kangaroo is only half the problem. Getting back on the road afterwards is also quite important. Same situation if you are swerving to avoid anything else, like a big fat truck in the middle of the road, or, of course, a child, confrontingly. Expecting to be Batman in either situation without putting in the hard work earlier is, frankly, nuts. Perhaps, I don't know, one's battery-powered adult instrument of some description, which you purchased online and which arrived in 
plain wrapping, as these things do, and which has, frankly, no business whatsoever being stored under your driver's seat, but which, which does, from time to time, make gridlock somewhat more tolerable. Perhaps this device rolls forward unexpectedly and jams the accelerator wide open, inconveniently. The point I'm making is the throttle and the brake, together, operating together, They should not do this because they do opposite things, and you don't need them both at once. And if you do call on them both contemporaneously for some reason, the car should simply identify that you're being something of a dick and intervene intelligently. In such a situation, I'm told, it does make sense to interlock the throttle against the brake input. Most cars have throttle by wire these days, so it's relatively easy to kill the throttle via ECU intervention. In this situation, it's just a few lines of computer code. So instead of being a bad remake of the movie Speed from 1994, with you starring but minus Sandra Bullock, arguably at her hottest, the car just stops. And I think you'd agree. That's nice. As to this issue of drivers in excess of 70, unquote, I got no problem with that, okay? Provided you can still drive safely. And if you are over 70 and driving, or at any other friggin' age, do not drive with both feet on both pedals at the same time. You know, don't do that, because you are driving like a dick if you do. If you have developed this poor and annoying habit over time, how about you step right up and undevelop it now? Because it's not that hard. Because if you don't foreseeably need the brake pedal, put your damn left foot back on the floor, preferably on the footrest, so that your body may be effectively braced with your left leg. This is how you are supposed to drive, after all. So... Just realise that it's very effective for swerving and evasive manoeuvres to have your body braced in the seat. It makes you part of the car and the miraculous three-axis accelerometer inside your head functions much better if you are locked together as one. If you're not doing that, frankly, you're an idiot. An idiot. There's no other way to put it. Unwittingly, perhaps, but an idiot nonetheless. Plenty of idiots out there on the road. Absolutely no requirement for you to be one of them. No need for more on-road idiots because, hey, we're all stocked up. Just to recap here, left foot braking with automatics, totally fine. It's the preferred option, after all, because two feet, two pedals. It's the perfect division of responsibility. The left foot's job is remain on the footrest as the default state. And then when your spider sense tingles and you determine that a braking intervention might soon be required, just shift that foot to above the brake pedal. Not touching the brake pedal, just above. Get ready to stop. And then if you need to brake, just press the pedal as required. You just saved a second or so preemptively by moving your left foot across, and that is three car lengths at conventional urban driving speeds and much more than that out there on the highway. No other mad Jedi driving technique can save you this amount of stopping space. If you ultimately do not need to brake, just move that left foot back to the footrest. It is totally impractical and stupid to drive with your left foot continually poised above the brake pedal, touching the brake pedal, whatever. Plus, if you press just a little bit, it causes premature brake wear and it rudely shines the friggin' brake lights at the driver behind you, as well as obscuring when you actually start to stop. It shines that friggin' light at him even when you are not really braking, in other words, and that kind of makes you a dick times two. You don't want that, I suppose. If you cannot do this with those pesky feet down there, irrespective of your age, there's really only one more thing you can do, and that would be get out your license and throw it into the nearest shredder. 
in the interests of public safety. It's quite okay to accelerate and brake exclusively with your right foot as well. It's just not as efficient and certainly not as effective for performance driving in an automatic. Brakes are designed to kill the throttle these days. It is a smart software interlock that saves lives potentially, and it's simply never a problem unless you drive badly.